بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. We continue our discussion about self-deception based on المحجة البيضاء ولم سيك. We reached page three hundred fifteen. So one group of Ahlul Ilm, scholars and students who suffer ghurur, self-deception, are those that they have really learned, okay? They have not wasted their life. They have studied properly, they have taken notes, they have reviewed, they have done mubahisa, they have passed exams, so they have learned. Also, they have done their wajibat. They have avoided haram. Even they were careful about their traits of character, about virtues and vices. But some traces of ego has remained in their hearts and that little by little grows so firqatun ukhra ahkamul ulum they have understood knowledge and different disciplines properly wa tahharul jawarih they Cleaned, purified, means kept it away from impurity. Their organs, their eye, their ear, their tongue, everything observes uh, requirements of taqwa. وَزَيَّنُوهَا بالطاعات. Not only they didn't commit haram, they have beautified their organs with doing acts of obedience. وَاجْتَنَبُوا ظَاهِرَ الْمَعَاصِي they have avoided apparent sins. وَتَفَقَّدُوا أَخْلَاقَ النَّفْسِ وَصِفَاتِ الْقَلْبِ They investigated, examined carefully the traits of soul and the qualities of heart. مِنَ الْرِيَاءِ وَالْحَسَدِ وَالْكِبْرِ وَالْحِقْدِ وَالْطَلَبِ الْعُلُوفِ Showing off, lack of sincerity. They were careful about this. Jealousy, arrogance, enmity, interest in power and position. They really struggled. They worked hard to distance themselves from all these problems. وَقَلَعُوا مِنَ الْقُلُوبِ مَنَابِتَهَا الْجَلِيَّةَ الْقَوِيَّةَ And they have uprooted the roots of these things which were clear. The clear roots they uprooted. But still they are مغرور. Still they are deceived. It shows it's not easy, you know. Even if you work hard for years and years, still you have to be worried. لَكِنَّهُمْ بَعْدُوا مَغْرُورُونَ Still they are deceived. Why? إِذْ بَقِيَتْ فِي زَوَايَ الْقَلْبِ مِنْ خَفَايَ مَكَائِدِ الشَّيْطَانِ Because in the corners of heart. You know, heart is something very complicated. It has many, many layers and many, many corners. You know, it's very difficult to clean it. So, something in some corner in one layer of heart can remain and then 
grows and fills all the heart. So some of the plots of shaitan is there. And some of the deceptions of nafs is hidden there. Makai. Ma uh, Makai means kate, means plots. And Chabaya means hidden deceptions of soul. Madaka, which is very subtle. You know, it's not, a, it doesn't need to be very big. You know, when you deal with heart, you have to understand that this is a very sensitive issue. It doesn't need to be something big. It can be very little. Yeah? Like a little micro can damage the whole, you know, heart. So it's very subtle and it's very difficult to notice, to understand. Falam laha. They didn't notice this. Wa So they didn't take care of it. Okay? Wa mithaluhu man yuridu Min al hashish. Their example is like a farmer. Imagine a farmer, for example, you want to uh, grow wheat. Then some plants, some types of grass or you know other types of plants can weeds. Weeds. They take over. Yes. Unwanted, unwanted yes, yes. So, you have to remove them. And this person, this farmer, is the one who was very careful. He didn't let this take over. So, anything that he saw on the surface, he trimmed it. But there were roots and there were seeds which had not yet come out. They didn't have enough time to come out. So it's very important that every day you have to go and check. Don't say, you know, I cleaned it completely. Now I am relaxing. <laughs> he went around. Examined any plant, any bad plant. That قَدْ ظَهَرَ وَبَرَزَ Which was, you know, clear, which had emerged. Okay? Anything that had grown. إِلَّا أَنَّهُ لَمْ يُفَتَّشْ أَمَّا لَمْ يَخْرُجْ رَأْسُهُ بَعْدُ مِنْ تَحْتِ الْآلِ But he was not able to go a little bit under the ground and see those plants which have not yet emerged. He thought, no, any problem that was there by now must have emerged, and anything that has emerged, I have taken care of it. But from those roots, those seeds, some branches, very subtle, had grown but have not yet come out. But they are there. Mm -hmm. Under the surface, they are spread. But he didn't take care of it. All of a sudden, when this person is heedless, and he says, now, let me, for example, I have done everything, let me go and few days, you know, have a rest. Let me few days, you know, travel. And when he comes back and he wants to harvest, he says, oh, all the farm is filled with this. 
فا اذا و بها في غفلته و قد نبتت و قویت they have grown and they have become strong و افسدت اصول الزرع they have damaged and corrupted all the roots of the with the main product without him knowing من حيث لا يدري he doesn't know how فكذلك العالم the same can happen to some ulama not johal even ulama قد يفعل جميع ذلك he does everything but he is not careful about those hidden things ويذهل عن المراقبة للخفايا والتفقد للدقائق he doesn't examine subtle things big things he's careful he doesn't do haram he's very careful about about that anything that he notices he takes care of it but he is unfortunately not careful about those things that are hidden this is why you have to be always alert yeah you can never be relaxed even if just as exaggeration i say even if you are coming out of meeting with jibrail you have to be careful maybe something is happening and you don't notice maybe a kind of arrogance is now emerging and you don't know you meet a mom but you don't know maybe your ego is growing you think oh i am very special why imam has met me so never you can relax فتراه يسهر ليله ونهاره في جمع العلوم وترتيبها وتحسين الفاظها you see he keeps awake during the night and all the night and day he is collecting knowledge information classifying them making you know books writing books and he thinks annabaithahu alhirsu ala izhar din allah he thinks that his motivation is coming from his great interest in spreading and <coughs> presenting the religion of god okay you think this is a motive why i'm working so hard because i want to serve religion i want to spread the word of god i want to spread divine law but yeah uh, so if you can listen then inshallah we will give you and maybe the hidden motivation was something else of course this is not to discourage you from learning yeah because shaitan can say oh look even if you work hard and study hard maybe it's because of shaitan shaitan himself comes and says you know don't study because ulama can also have problem no we have to fight in many fronts we have to fight against laziness against ignorance against many things but at the same time we have to be careful about our intention because to be a true alim a pious alim alim rabbani is such an important thing that you have to resist against 
lots of temptations and we are standing against many, many pr problems. It's not easy. If one person becomes Alim Rabbani, is worse for shaitan than millions of people. Therefore, so many plots against emerging of Ulama Rabbani. Maybe the hidden motive is Talabu Zikr. He wants to be famous, seeking fame. I think I am promoting religion, but indeed I am promoting myself. Okay? Because for us, our promotion comes from religion. Because we are not selling any good or product, you know, <laughs> other than hadith and Quran, we are sharing this. Yeah? So, other people, when they promote themselves, it's easier to understand. But for us, it's very difficult. We don't understand whether we are promoting religion or we are promoting ourselves. Yes? I think this is perhaps one of the deepest uh, issues that we might face. And I think maybe the only way to check is... One of the... One of the most deep and deep yeah, yeah. issues. And I think maybe the only way is to see if you also become very happy when someone else is yeah. promoting to you. Yeah. And you're not having any jealousy towards that person. Yeah. So it's not about you. If anyone, it's just about the faith. It's not about me or... Yeah, he mentions actually that uh, how we can check, uh, you know, but it's very delicate. So the hidden motive is seeking fame. Your fame be spread all over. You want to be a renowned scholar, international speaker, <laughs> a world celebrity. One of the things which was very common in the past was when it was, there was a very good scholar, people from all over the world used to go to take lessons from him. Okay? For example, say, he is Mimman Yushaddu Ilayhi Rahal. Someone that people travel to go and see him. Okay? So imagine if you have a teacher that you have students from all over the world. Yeah? So this is very good, but you have to be careful. Do you enjoy this because you are famous or not? From all different horizons of the world, people travel to go and learn from him. People praise him. People say, MashaAllah, this man has no love for dunya. He's Detached from dunya. He's pious, he's knowledgeable. When some important things happen or some missions, they prefer him. In, they give preference to him in the purposes that they have. People gather around him to benefit from him. He gets pleasure by seeing that people listen to him carefully. He gets pleasure from this. People nod their head when he gives, and he says, MashaAllah. They are all nodding their head for me. Okay? If you are happy because people appreciate the message of God that you are sharing, that's another issue. But if it is for you as a person, so it's dangerous. 
Valvukai alay. Sometimes people cry. For example, you recite for Imam Hussein and people cry. And you are happy that I made them cry. <laughs> no one like me can <laughs> make them cry, you know. So this is selfish. But ta'adjub men, they are all surprised. وَالْفَرَحِ بِكَثْرَةِ الْأَصْحَابِ وَالْمُسْتَفِيدِينَ And then he is very happy that he has many companions and many disciples, many students. وَالسُّرُورِ بِالتَّخَسُّسِ بِهَاضِهِ الْخَاسِيَّةِ مِنْ بَيْنِ السَّائِرِ الْأَقْرَانِ And then he is very happy that this has happened only to him. He has had many classmates, many friends, many colleagues. But this has not happened to them. This has happened only to him. Because he has knowledge, he has taqwa. وَالتَّمَكُّنِ مِنْ إِطْلَاقِ اللِّسَانِ الطَّعْنِ فِي الْكَافَةِ and then he can very easily blame people who are following dunya and attached to dunya. He has such position that now he can easily blame people. La an tafajjuan. Not because he is really sad and he suffers, people are attached to dunya. It's a very uh, subtle point. Indeed, he wants to say, I am not like you. Oh, people, why you go after dunya? Why you put money over money? Why you want to have luxurious house? He wants to say, I am not like that, you know? Is it clear? So it's not that he really is trying to encourage people to be ascetic or, for example, not to be attached to dunya. <laughs> he wants to say, I am distinct, I am special. حياته في الباطن بمن تضم له من أمر وعمارة وعز وانغياد وتوغير وحسن ثناء فلو تغيرت عليه القلوب واعتقدوا فيه خلاف الزح بما يظهر من أعماله فأساه يتشوش عليه قلبه وتختلط أوراده ووظائفه this poor person that now all his affairs are going well, he has power, he has respect, he has position, people listen to him, obey him, honor him, praise him. If hearts of people change, تغيرت عليه القلوب if people no longer love him. And people think that he is not Zahid. He is not, you know, uh, ascetic, you know. Then this person loses his tranquility. His heart becomes very disturbed. He cannot even do his prayer you know properly he's, he cannot do his wajibat properly he cannot do his zik properly then he would do everything possible to find an excuse to tell people that I am not bad you know don't think like this you know about me ربما يحتاج إلى أن يكذب خطية عيبه. Even sometimes, God forbids, he may tell lies to cover his deficiency and his.
faults. Because for him, the main thing was what? What was the main thing for him? People. People's opinion was the most important thing. Now, in order to bring back the love of people and praise of people, he's happy even to tell lies. وَأَثَاهُ يُؤْثِرُ بِالْكَرَامَةِ وَالْمُرَاءَاتِ مَنِ اعْتَقَدَ فِيهِ الزُّحْدَ وَالْوَرَعَ And therefore, he becomes very selective and discriminating. Anyone who loves him and praises him, he respects. He divides people. Good people are those people who respect me and love me and praise me. So he prefers them over the people who don't show this respect to him. He gives preference in respect and care to whom? Anyone who thinks that he is Zahid, he gives them more care and respect. Even if this person, he knows that these people who think I am good, they are exaggerating. No? If a person comes to you and says, I think you are the best a scholar, the best a speaker, the best writer, and you know that you are not. Why you become happy and why you respect this person more than other people? It's very difficult. You know, normally, those who praise us more, we tend to love them more. Even if we know that they are exaggerating. On the other hand, if someone knows the limit of his knowledge and merits, his heart becomes far from that person. That person is right. I don't have that much knowledge or taqwa, but I'm not happy that he knows my problem or my limits. I prefer the people who exaggerate about me. All this is لأنه أتبع له وأتبع لمراده وأكثر صناعا عليه وأشد أصحابه إصناعا إليه وأحرص على خدمته. He prefers people. All because they are more obedient. Who is more obedient? He prays. Who is more respectful? Who praises me more? Who listens to me more? Who wants to serve me more? I prefer. Maybe these people also have no bad intention. These people who respect him and praise him, they want to learn. They think he's alim. He respect. They respect him as alim. They want to learn from his knowledge. But he thinks that I am special, and those who praise me are also special because they praise me. So then he continues. I don't want to read all of it. Just let us now reflect. This shows that, first of all, we are not dealing with a very little problem or one, for example, you know, facet problem. Because our journey is towards maximum heights of perfection, 
then it means that we have to also overcome many, many problems. You know, if you want to go on top of a ladder, which has 10, for example, stairs, or a ladder which has 1,000 stairs, which one is more difficult? The one which has one. When we want to go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is infinite, and he is infinite in all beauties, it means that from all corners we have to purify ourselves. Otherwise we cannot go to the purest of the pure. So, any trace of impurity that remains in us can become an obstacle. Especially for those who go higher, these can become more dangerous. Yeah? You know, if you are in the first level, many problems cannot really be a problem for you. But when you go higher and higher, even a little mistake is enough to destroy you. Yeah? Even a little mistake. If, for example, I am a person that no one listens to me, my problems can be limited to myself and my family. But if I have 100 people with me, or 1 million people with me, or 100 million people, my mistakes can affect lives of many people. And also, people show more attention to me. Therefore, my mistakes are under lens, under microscope. So, shaitan and nafsa ammare from outside and from inside, do their best to destroy us. If not, at least stop us. First they try to destroy us, but if not, at least to stop us. So we have to be very, very cautious. And as we said in the beginning of the uh, sessions on self-assessment, a very important tool, a very important key for success is alertness. Because when you are alert, then you can see who is friend, who is enemy, what is beneficial, what is harmful, what is godly, what is satanic. We have to be alert. Alhamdulillah, <coughs> we have that ability to discern. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us in the way that alhamaha, fujuraha wa taqwaha. We can understand, we can smell what is good, what is bad. <laughs> the only thing is that we have to be alert. If you are heedless or asleep, you don't understand. So, always we have to be alert. And never, please, never take your success in the past as a guarantee for your success in future. Never take Allah's support for you in the past as a sign of Allah being pleased with you now. It's a big mistake. If Allah has been helping us, has been very kind with us, first of all, it doesn't mean that we didn't have problems. He is so kind that even if we have problems, it still helps us. But even if you didn't have problems in the past, it doesn't mean that in future you are not going to have problems. Okay? If you are a person that many people come and say, you know, Alhamdulillah, because of you, our life has improved because of you we are guided because of you now we are start for example praying practi practicing if you keep hearing this from people as still this doesn't mean that you are free from problems this is the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has seen some value in you but he is doing this and this is not guaranteed to remain it's a test. 
if you are grateful and if you are careful and you try to improve, inshallah, this would remain for you and this would increase. Otherwise, this may be taken away. And actually, we have many people that on the Day of Judgment, the people who have learned from them have higher position than them. And one of the sources of regret is to see people who have learned from you and uh, acted upon this and they are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you are in a lower position. So we have to be alert, we have to be self-critical, we cannot take Allah's support in the past as a guarantee for future. Any day has its own situation. Any day. Even if you had very, very close relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this doesn't mean that tomorrow you are okay. This is a big problem that we, many times we make this mistake. That we think because someone has been good or we have been good in the past, in future we are going to be good. So we have to be always alert and humble. And one of the things, yes. Maybe we can, inshallah, discuss. And one of the things that I think helps us is when we help each other. Because Al-Mu'minu Mir'atul Mu'min It is a mirror for another Mu'min. Yeah? And imagine if you have tens of mirrors around you. Then any problem you can find. If with love, with love and respect, we tell each other what we notice. Even you don't say that this is definitely, you know, you say maybe there is a trace of this problem in you. I should be happy to receive this. Someone which is said with kindness, with love. Uh, actually, we should request each other to share with each other our problems. When we were teenagers, with uh, some of our friends in the school, uh, I Actually, maybe what just once or twice, but I think they had it more. So it was 20 of us sitting and having lunch together, but also everyone was saying to other people what problems he sees in them. Uh, I don't think this is good, uh, because it's not good to say it in front of 20 people. But they, you know, they were very friendly. But at least one to one. Yeah? One to one, you can come to me and say, for example, maybe there is, maybe I am wrong, just you can make sure. You know, like, for example, if I see that you are going to travel and I see maybe one flat, one tire of you is flat or, you know, doesn't have enough air, I can tell you, you know, please check before you travel, you know, <laughs> make sure that you have enough air, for example. Or maybe this light is not working. This can help. But we need to be so close to each other and so intimate that we take these things in positive way. Not that, you know, then we become enemies of each other or hostile, you know. With love, with kindness, with respect, in private. Man wa'adha akhahu sirran faqad zan. If you give advice to your brother in private, secretly, 
you have added to his beauty. But if in front of people you do this, or Na'udhu in his absence, you do this, then of course you have damaged him. Yes. Pardon? I, I don't remember the, uh, which ma'asum. I think it's Prophet. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, we, uh, we can search if you shall have one, I can find I think it's from Imam Hun Bakr, yes. So, uh, I stop here. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah.